Hello friends, a very warm welcome to the Crochet Hook channel. See, today we have this absolutely useful crochet item. This is crochet MacBook Air sleeve case or here I have turned it into a bag by adding handles to it. You can crochet the sleeve for any laptop or any iPad, any device that you have. Every step is explained well in detail in the video ahead to make it convenient for you to go through. This crochet sleeve is worked using crochet diamond square grainy squares, the pattern of which is already shared on my channel. So find the link in the iCard and also in the description box. Also the pattern for this braided handle is also shared on my channel. Check the link in the iCard and also in the description box. See at the top of it here I have added the zipper, the matching zipper in a very neat and tidy way. Here at the end of the zipper I have added a crochet zip stopper. Have a look see how neat and clean it's been swan on all the sides. On the inside, I have lined this bag with 4mm thick foam to cushion our device well. For the friends who are joining me here for the first time, please do consider subscribing to my channel. That really means a lot, inspires, motivates and keeps us connected as you get a notification each time I post on my channel. So let's get ahead. Crochet the diamond granny squares here. I have used this Hobby India crochet thread. This is 100% acrylic yarn. And here I have used four colors of the yarn to work it in different colors. And I've used a crochet hook of 3.0 millimeters. You may also need a zipper, a matching zipper, a pair of scissors and a measuring tape. Here I have taken this 4 mm thick foam to line the bag on the inside. And this is cut out in the same size as that of my device. And I have two such pieces. Nextly, for the fabric lining here, I have used this... Uh, smooth cotton fabric to line the foam on both the sides also you'll need a cotton thread and sewing needle so here i have chosen six pieces for one side of our laptop bag and this is the color scheme i'll be following and here we'll be joining the two pieces together the motifs on their vertical edges as well as on the horizontal lines like this so let's first understand the stitches on the edge side see if we grab this motif here we have loops on the edges have a closer look see you can see these loops forming on the edge the loop that is towards the front side is the front loop and this is the back loop that is away from the front side this is the front loop this is this is the back loop right likewise in the next motif as well from this side if we see see we have loops on the edge these are the loops and uh, this is the back loop because this is away from the front side and we are simply going to work the stitching of the two motifs in these back loops, the corresponding back loops only. See, if we keep the two motifs together like this, we have these back loops that really get juxtaposed onto one another. They get really close and it will be very easy to sew them together. So, nextly, see, into every respective stitch, into every corresponding stitch, we are going to work our stitching all along this vertical line so first here in this corner chain one i'll just bring this thread and i'm going to tie a knot here like this having put the knot on the other end of this loose end see i have thread my needle with this loose end and here we begin our stitching or sewing of the two motifs together so now let's begin sewing so here in this corner first stitch, I'll first insert my needle through the back loop one more time. So the knot will get little inside and then into this stitch, the corner stitch on this side in its back loop. Just take out the thread like this. Now hold the two pieces together and we can very clearly see the back loops of the two pieces that are juxtaposed and we're going to work into every stitch remember it's very important that you don't miss any stitch again from this side into the back loop and then into the back loop of the next motif through it just pass your needle like this simple now from this side grab the two back loops and simply pass your needle through it like this Again from that side into the back loop of both the motifs simply pass your needle 
through both the loops. Simple. Now from this side, grab the back loop of this motif and the back loop of the next motif and pass your needle through, the both, through both the loops. Simple. Just keep grabbing every corresponding back loop in both the motifs. This is how it looks. I'll simply tighten it up a very little. Don't stretch it much. And here we have the big stitches, the quadruple crochets and we want to align them one atop another. So just make sure that they fall. You hold them so that the two quadruple crochets are aligned one atop another. Again, just simply keep sewing into the back loops of both the motifs. Simple. Likewise, into the next stitch, sew the back loops of both the corresponding stitches the same way. Simple. Now we have our quadruple crochets. Into the back loop of both the quadruple crochets, simply pass your needle through them and uh, see, it's beautifully aligned together. And likewise, just keep sewing it. And if you want to tighten the thread a little bit, so the stitches get a little tightened, simply stretch the thread a little, not too much, so the work will be clean. I am just continuing sewing the two pieces the same way till I reach the other corner here. I have reached the corner here, into the corner stitches also, I have worked the same sew and uh, in this chain one here and then in the chain one here. I will just insert my needle through them and then I want to take my thread out onto the back side, so into the same stitch, grabbing, I will just put one more stitch and uh, now I'll take out my thread onto the back side and here I'm just putting a knot without tightening it much. We simply want to secure the thread here. So put a knot and secure a little loose end onto the back side in the same shade as we always do. Having put a couple of knots, I'll just secure a little thread. So the work on the front is clean and uh, our work is sturdy as well. Once done securing, cut that extra thread. And see likewise I have joined this third motif as well. And now we are going to place this fourth motif. I will work a little bit with you to give you a clear idea. So, and afterwards we will be joining the next two pieces as well the same way. So that will form one face of our laptop bag or sleeve. So here into the corner chain one again the same way. I am joining my thread in its back loop, secure the thread on this end with a with couple of knots like this and uh, thread your needle, the sewing needle with the other end of the same thread like this and from this corner we will begin sewing it the same way. Simple into the back loops of every corresponding stitch. So the sewing pattern is same for all the motifs, just keep grabbing the back loops, the corresponding back loops on both the edges and uh, keep sewing. And I am working it with you just to show you how we are going to work the junction point of 
four motifs. Here also keep the quadruple crochets one on top another to give it a clean look. The symmetry should be clear. So here I am just working the two motifs together, sewing them together the same way. Here I have my corner stitch and I am just sewing the back loops of both the motifs the same way. And once this is worked, see the first two motifs that we joined at the center of this, see here, at the center stitch from, I will just take out my needle from here into the back loop of that uh, current working motif like this. So, this corner also gets properly joined. Now, along the this these this two edges we are going to join the next two motifs so into the back loop of both the motifs just keep working the sewing along this edge as well the same way from the back loop of both the motifs take out the needle and see our junction of four motifs is so neat and clean so tidy and i just wanted to share this with you that it has to be tidy without any holes or spaces showing up and then begin sewing on the next edge the same way right see the junction is so neat and clean without any spaces or holes sew along this edge and then bring the next two motifs atop these two and uh, join them the same way as we have joined so far See here, I have joined all my six motifs together and nextly we are going to work a very simple border around this entire piece, a border of five rows and that will be a simple single crochet border that we are going to work nextly. Here I have taken this blue thread and in the corner in the chain one space, I will simply first put a slip knot with this doubled blue thread and uh, in this chain one space at the corner just bring out this knot throw it on the front side tighten it up and here work one chain again insert the hook into the chain one space pull up a loop and work one single crochet then then here work two chains one and two again into the same corner chain space work one more single crochet we have created the same corner pattern again in the corner here right one single crochet chain two one single crochet now we have single crochets ahead insert the hook into the very next single crochet pull up a loop and work one single crochet atop it into the next single crochet work one single crochet simple into the next single crochet below work one single crochet into the next SC below work 1 SC, 1 single crochet. Work 1 single crochet into the next single crochet below. Simple. And this is how we just have to cre keep creating 1 single crochet into every stitch below till we reach this junction point here. So just work single crochets and I'll see you here. See I've worked all my single crochets just reaching this junction between the two motifs. A couple more to go so just work 1 single crochet into every single crochet of this motif one more to go and then we'll reach the chain to space of this current motif so here in this next single crochet also insert the hook pull up a loop and work one single crochet and then yarn over in the corner chain two space of the current motif here insert the hook pull up a loop and work it like one half double crochet like this simple so we created one half double crochet here again yarn over into the next corner chain two space of the next motif insert the hook and work it like one half double crochet like this simple and again into the next single crochet just begin working one single crochet so in the corner we created one SC chain two one SC then we created one single crochet atop every single crochet below in the corner chain two of the current motif we worked one half double crochet one HDC and in the next corner chain two of the next motif also we worked one half double crochet on this side as well now again we began working one single crochet into every stitch ahead till we reach this next corner here just like this 
we are going to create the next corner as well so here just keep working one single crochet into every stitch below till you reach the corner simple i'll see you here at the corner so here i have worked it and reaching this corner chain two space just couple more to go and uh, the last one here and then in this corner chain two space also insert the hook and work one single crochet then work two chains one and two and work one more single crochet in the same corner chain two space the corner below simple so we created the same corner pattern here as well now again work one single crochet into every stitch ahead till you reach this junction point between the two motifs where you have to work one half double crochet in both the corner chain two spaces so here i have reached this junction point i'll just show you one more time so till this last single crochet i'm just going to work one single crochet each like this this is the last single crochet of this current motif and in this corner chain two here yarn over insert the hook and pull up a loop then yarn over pull through all the loops one half double crochet is created simple then in the next corner chain two space with the other motif as well yarn over insert the hook in this corner chain two pull up a loop yarn over pull through all the loops one more half double crochet is created again ahead in all other stitches till you reach the corner chain two just keep creating one single crochet into every stitch ahead simple so it's just at the junction point where you have to work one half double crochet on either sides in the corners and rest in the corner we are working here one single crochet chain two and one single crochet then we work one single crochet into every stitch and here in the corner chain two space on both the motifs we simply work one half double crochet on either sides and then we again resume working our single crochets till we reach the next corner simple so at every junction you have to create one half double crochet in both the motifs in that cha corner chain two space it's that simple and just work single crochets in between and in the corner chain two again simply work one single crochet chain two and one single crochet that's it so just keep following this simple pattern and i'll see you here at the beginning so here i have worked one round of single crochets all the way around this uh, panel and reaching the end just a couple more to go so in the next single crochet simply work one single crochet in this last single crochet also work one single crochet and here we have one single crochet but in the two strands of the first single crochet that we just worked that we had worked in the beginning it's at the hook pull up a loop and simply work one slip stitch to join this corner here simple so one round of border is done now we'll go for the second round of border and i'll be continuing with the same shade that is with blue color only so here in the corner chain two again pull up a loop and work one slip stitch to reach this space here then chain one then insert the hook into the same corner chain two space and work one single crochet then work two chains and again work one more single crochet in the corner chain two space like this simple so we created the corner again with the same pattern one single crochet chain to one single crochet nextly we have single crochets ahead you don't have to worry this time for the junction points just keep working one single crochet all till you reach the next corner so next the second round is very easy just begin working one single crochet into every stitch ahead till you reach the next corner chain two space ahead so here just work one single crochet into every single crochet below and also in the hdc's at the junction points we have just to work one single crochet atop these hdc's here as well till we reach the next corner chain to space see here i have reached this junction point and there is no change in the pattern just work one single crochet atop every stitch ahead so here also i'm just working one single crochet into every stitch below simple and just like this row two of the border you can increase the size of the border to any number you wish to any any size you wish according to the dimensions of your device so just reach this corner chain two see i've worked it all the way just created one single crochet into every stitch and uh, couple more to go 
and I'll reach this corner chain to space here. So in this corner chain to space again inside the hook and work one single crochet. Then work two chains one and two and then work one more single crochet into the same corner chain to space. So we created the same corner pattern and then we have single crochets ahead be it the junction points or uh, the midpoints of the motif simply create one single crochet atop every stitch below and create the corner pattern in the corner chain to space below and uh, just like this work the border two and uh, reach here and join it the same way we joined this row below in the border one so in the row one of the border and you can work as many rows as you wish to befit the size of your device so here I'm going to work a total of six rows, six such rounds, two already I'm going to complete with you. And see here, I have worked all my six rounds. I have worked two rounds with the blue shade and four rounds with the green shade. And this is how thick it gets. And likewise, you can increase the size of the border according to the size of your device and the kind of interfacing you're going to put inside. So keeping that in mind, increase the size of the border. So nextly, we're going to add the zipper on the width side of one of these panels that we have created. And we want to sew it along this edge. On the right side, we'll zip like this. And then we'll bring the other piece and sew it on the exact place on the other side of the zipper. And keeping a little space in between for the zipper to open up properly. So here, see, I have left one inch around on this end and this end also I'll be leaving one inch of a zipper and after that we'll be putting a manual stopper. So here I have my thread and needle ready and see this is the wrong side of the zipper. On the wrong side we'll just sew it, put in a couple of knots and this is a simple zip stopper that we're working manually, stitching it here, we'll just work. So just put a couple of stitches like this around the zip and don't worry about about the finishing of this thing as this is the wrong side of the zip and also it will go onto the inside. Having put a couple of knots, secure it with a couple of knots like this as shown. Simple. Having secured it well, cut that extra thread and this is well secured. Zipper is ready now. So here our zipper is well prepared now and uh, leaving one inch from this stopper, I'll just cut that extra zipper that is there. And we only need this much. And nextly, just centralize your panel and uh, keeping it centralized at the top of the zip on one side. See, this is the front side of the zip that is showing up. And we have to centralize our panel and here my needle and thread is ready and on the corner of this panel on the inside of this loop here see we have two loops on the inner loop I'm simply tying the thread here like this we simply mean to secure it here well And now just place it the way you want to add it to your zipper and you can also put safety pins keeping the two pieces together at equal intervals I'm just going to go like that because that will be easy for me and uh, so let's get ahead so here we have already a yarn tied and now see we have stitches on the edge let's have a closer look we have stitches here and we have two loops of every stitch we'll be inserting a needle between the two loops of the peripheral stitches see between the two loops between the two loops of the next stitch between the two loops of the next stitch so basically we'll be seeing the back loop of the single crochets on the peripheral round with the zip so in the corner again i have inserted my needle through the panel and then through the zip like this where we want to place it keeping a little distance from the center of the zip right then hold the two pieces together and see from this side after a small distance I'm taking my needle out on this side in the next stitch see between the two 
between the two loops between the two loops of the next stitch then in the next stitch from between the two loops through the zip on the other side right simple then again just tighten it up and make a very small stitch and take your needle out between the two loops of the next stitch ahead like this right i hope it's visible and it's very easy to sew the two pieces together like this you don't need to put any any pins to hold them together in place into the next stitch between the two loops then through the zipper right and very slightly tighten the thread so it doesn't the zip doesn't get gathered up again from the back side between the two loops of the next stitch like this take it out then into the next stitch insert the needle between the two loops then through the zip as well like this it's a very simple and easy method to sew your panel with the zipper and that too very neatly see i've just tightened it up and see how beautifully and well joined the two pieces look again from this side after small distance into the next stitch between the two loops take out the needle on the front side like this right into the next stitch between the two loops then through the zipper and maintain the distance of your panel from the center of the zip all along the way you began it in the corner it has to remain the same distance just keep that much in mind again from this side between the two loops out on the front side so you have to grab each and every stitch ahead and work it really precisely but that will give such a neat and clean look to your panels and the zip will look so neatly joined with them see there's no space between the two pieces and this is how just keep sewing every stitch with your zipper keeping the distance from the center all together same till the end and uh, sewing every stitch with this panel and make sure that the zipper does not get gathered when you stretch it so here i have worked it all the way reach this end on this corner in the corner stitch we're just going to put the stitches and inserting the needle between the two loops only so the lower or the back loop only gets swen with the zipper we can work the stitch here a couple of times with the zip in the corner like this and having secured it well see how neatly it's been joined and in the corner also it's strong now i'll put a little stitches a few stitches on this length side edge also i'll grab one more stitch and just secure that as well with my zipper see what i'm doing here just to give it extra stability i'm attaching this peripheral stitch as well down the corner on the length side right so it gets all well joined together and then on the back side put a couple of knots to secure the thread like this having secured the thread putting the knots we will also secure a little length of the loose end into the into our panel through the stitches so here i have well secured my thread putting the knots and then on the inside of this panel only i'm going to secure a little length of my thread so it gets all sturdy and all well swen having secured it for a perfect length i'll simply cut out that extra thread that is there right so this panel gets beautifully joined with the zip see how neat and clean the two look this is the wrong side on the zip 
and uh, this is the front side of the zip and see there's no spaces between the zip and the panel and it's so neat and clean have a look closely so here i have sewn this first panel with the zip and nextly i'll be sewing the other panel also atop the zip keeping it in the same centralizing it the same way we have centralized the first panel see i have my needle and thread ready and the process of attaching this panel is same in the corner on the inside loop in the corner stitch simply tie your thread secure it here i'm just guiding you in case the friends who are new to crochet need any help otherwise it's the same thing that you did with the first panel so then having this yarn properly joined on the corner keep it well in place atop the zip and begin sewing keeping it at the equal distance from the center as we had kept, kept the first panel and to assist yourself you can just open up the zip and it will be easy to hold the two pieces then and now from this side in the corner stitch between the two loops insert the needle through the stitch and then through the zipper then from the other side take it out between the two loops of the next stitch ahead simple we're going to go the same way the way we went with the first panel again into the next stitch between the two strands then through the zipper just keep putting small stitches into every loop take out the needle between the two loops the next stitch then into the next stitch insert your needle through the panel and then through the zipper simple we are just sewing it the same way and remember to grab every stitch that is ahead because then it will give you the tidy look that you want to accomplish and believe me this way the the work looks so neat and tidy and your panel gets so beautifully so neatly and get joined with your zipper see this is how it looks on the back side it looks so clean putting small stitches and just go ahead all the way till you reach this other corner here and then join it with the zipper the same way we had joined this corner here so here a zip is perfectly swen with the two panels and see how neat and clean it has come up on both the sides it looks so tidy here nextly we're going to add the bag handles i have shared the pattern of this bag handle on my channel so please go and check that out and uh, you can find the link in the i card and also in the description box you can see the link for the same so go ahead and check the pattern for the same and nextly we're going to draw in the bag handle see um this is the right side of this bag handle this is how i want to place it here all centralized at the top of this quadruple crochet front post quadruple crochet so i want to fix it like this here i have my thread and needle ready i have taken the same color thread with which i'm going to sew it so and this is the portion we are going to sew so because our handle has to be really strong and sturdy so a little um at least one and half inch or one inch of the handle must be swen with the bag to give it a perfect sturdiness for the device so just work it the way i'm doing see i'm not taking out the needle right in the front or top of this handle rather it's a little on the downside of the handle where i take out my needle like this see so that way the handle will look neat and clean on the front side altogether and just like this i'm going to cover this entire thing working small stitches like this to and fro see i'm not making any stitches on the top of this handle rather on the side on the down side of this thing so just work the sewing all along 
the edge of this handle as much you want to sew with the panel like this and this handle absolutely looks so robust and gives our textured bag a very textured look as well and see here I have swelled my handle now we have this loose end on the beginning side I'll just take out my thread onto this side first I simply want to bring the two threads together here tie the knot with both the threads Put a couple of knots to ensure its studness then cut that extra thread and you'll having you'll be having loose ends just sew it neatly on the inside here in the same sheet to which it belongs so now this section is completely stitched with this panel and very sturdy as well likewise fold your handle like this centralize it put it in the right place and just sew it the same way we worked that portion of the handle and similarly add the other handle to the other panel neatly to prepare the hard interface padding for one side of the panel see i have taken this uh, thick foam and it's the same size as my device right so i have cut it out in the same size nextly i have taken this cotton fabric and this is one or one and a half centimeter bigger than this foam i have taken two such pieces one and one more will need because we want to sew a sack uh, using these two pieces for this foam sheet, right? So, for our padding, we want to cover a foam on all the sides with the fabric. So, we'll be sewing a sack of these two pieces and inside will lie our foam. So, just put the two pieces one atop another like this. So just place the two fabrics one atop another. We are going to sew three sides of this sack first and see. Just keep in mind that uh, the right side of both the fabric should be on the inside and the wrong sides on the outer sides and we are going to sew the three sides and we are just simply going to hand sew it. I have my thread and needle ready and uh, this is a very simple stitching. You can also use a machine to sew it and uh, I'm simply running a simple hem like this and this will work just keep in mind to leave around uh, one finger distance on all the edges and then sew it leaving one fin finger gap on all the edges like this see how easy it is Likewise, you have to maintain the distance on the corners as well. You can very easily hand sew it in a couple of minutes and the sack gets ready. It's not at all a tedious job. Absolutely easy. Likewise, just keep sewing leaving one finger gap on all the edges and this will work. And remember, this is the wrong side of the fabric on the outer sides on both the sides so just sew this one side then reach the corner here also leave one finger distance and on this side also keep one finger distance and sew it along this side and then sew the third side as well you have just to sew three sides and then we'll place our foam inside it see the sack is well sewn on all the three sides and now just let's invert it first i'll just take my needle out on this edge on the inside so it's now on the right side of the fabric the needle and the thread and now take the inside out flip it over so that the right side of the of both the fabrics now face on the outside right the sack is ready now and it's well sewn on the three sides see we have a thread on the inside place the foam or the hard interfacing whatever you are using into the sack all tightened up on the edges and in the corners and on this open side secure the fabric of one side like this folding it onto the inside around the foam then fold the corners of this next fabric like this and fold it onto the other side like this hold to hold the two pieces together just put the pins we are simply going to sew it from this corner 
till the other corner. We simply want to work this pad and it has to be covered properly with the fabric on both the sides. So we have done this padding, right? And simply hand sew it. Keep removing the pins and keep sewing. This is simple hand sewing. Along all the till you reach this corner, put the knot and cut the thread. So here we have our panels ready with the handles and uh, our zip is also attached. Flip it over. On the inside, we want to fix our padding. See, this padding is ready. You have to prepare two such paddings for both the panels. So, the way we prepared one, just prepared one more. And see, we want to place it like this on the inside of one of the panels and we'll sew it on all the sides. And on the edges here, I'll be sewing it into the second row of the border. So, let's sew it. So, just place this foam onto this panel like this see I'll be placing on the zip side atop the zip I'll be placing this interfacing and sewing it with the zip so here I have my thread and needle ready let's first tie this thread on one of the top corners so on the right corner on the inside of this corner I'll simply tie my thread I've taken a simple cotton thread so just tie to secure the knot and then we'll begin with the sewing so place this interfacing pad and now we'll begin sewing. First, I'll take my thread on the outside and we'll begin sewing from this side now. The panel will be sewn well with the fabric of this interfacing like this. So then in the corner only insert the needle. See on the underside of this fabric of the interfacing, I'm taking out my needle like this. And make sure that when you are working this stitch from the outside, it has to be a small stitch so the thread doesn't show up. And it gives a neat and clean look to our sleeve, our macchia sleeve. So just make sure that you work small stitches from the outside so the thread is not at all showing up and our work is clean. And work small stitches so the work will be sturdy and strong as well. Like this. This is how we have to sew on the zipper side. And see, I have put this foam interfacing atop the zipper. So the zipper, the panel and the fabric of the foam interfacing, all the three are getting swen at the same time, right? Just like this, keep working small and neat and clean stitches till the corner and then we'll work the sewing on the edge side here later on. See, I have swen this zip side of this foam interfacing with this panel and now we'll move on to this long edge side. So just hold the fabric in place like this, we will sew in the second row of the border, of the single crochet border that we had worked together, right? So, so the fabric of this foam interfacing will be sewn with the second row. So then I'll take my needle on the inside and just keep holding this fabric with this panel. And just as we were working on the zipper side, work small stitches from the outside to and fro in and out from the outside it has to be a small stitch also on the inside it has to be a small stitch it will take a little time but the thing that you'll prepare will definitely be tidy and very neat and clean in appearance so just and also very sturdy because the stitches will be small so it will hold the two or the three pieces together right so here we are just sewing the panel with the fabric of the foam and not at all foam just like this, keep sewing on all the sides. See, I have sewn this panel, this interfacing all well with the panel on all the sides, as you can see. And it's so neat and clean. I have reached this corner where we have this um, open zip side and we want to fix it here. So, I'll just push it downwards before we seal this corner into the between this panel and fabric and hold the two pieces together that you want to sew together and just... Close the corner, sewing it the same way we have sewn the entire edge. Hold them properly. It has to be neat and clean. So just work the stitches properly keeping the zip inside as I have already shown. And once you are done sewing, just put a couple of knots here in this fabric like this to secure this thread well and i'll just take this thread 
a little bit the loose end I have secured into the green portion on the inside of the panel and have cut the thread. So our panel uh, is well attached with this foam interfacing fabric and it's it has come up so neat and clean. You can see it on the sides how it looks and the zip section is also very well taken care of. Nextly just place another foam interfacing onto the inside of another panel and sew it neatly on all the sides just the same way. Now our both the panels are ready with the foam interfacing being attached to them. Put them one atop another like this and we are going to sew the three edges on in this single crochet border on the outer row we are simply going to sew the two pieces together all around three edges so here i have taken the same matching yarn and in one of the corners i'll just bring in the yarn and put a couple of knots here tightly to secure the thread well and then hold the two pieces together i have uh, thread my needle with one of its ends long ends and between the two strands of the single crochet on the last row in the corner on the other panel just take it out like this then from this side between the two strands of the single crochet then between the two strands of the single crochet on the other panel like this just working to and fro into every single crochet ahead so it will be very sturdy very strong at the same time it will give such a neat and clean well packed look tighten it all up and now it will be just like this you don't have to stretch it many times just keep sewing so just keep inserting the needle beneath the two strands of the single crochets on the periphery of both the panels and keep working two and throw stitches simple this kind of sewing really gives a very neat and clean tidy look to our sack or sleeve just work the stitching all the way round. When reaching the corners, place the corners well in place, one top another, and work the sewing the same way. See, I've worked it all till here. I've reached this corner. Just hold the corner well in place and go about the corner, stitching it the same way. Now I have worked it all until here. And I've reached this end of zip. So we want to keep this end of the zip out and we'll sew it all till the end. We'll close this corner. So just simply sew it the same way we have been sewing all along. Right? Simple. Keep the zip folded up. So you grab every single crochet of both the corners well. And now I'm just sewing it backwards for a little while to secure the thread more and more into my sleeve and now I'll secure a little thread into this green shade only neatly so a thread is well secured having secured the thread well just cut it cut that extra thread in close proximity see a sack is ready now we'll put a stopper on this end so here our entire sewing procedure is over in our bag or the laptop sleeve gets ready see we are just going to work the crochet zip stopper that will put on this end so here i have taken a double thread and uh, as usual and work a slip knot first and then here work four chains one two three and four now insert the hook into the very first chain pull up a loop work a slip stitch to join this ring see a magic ring is created it's a very small ring so but still you can make it out now work three chains this first chain three stands for a dc then yarn over insert the hook at the center of the ring pull up a loop yarn over pull through first two loops then yarn over pull through the remaining two loops one double crochet is worked yarn over work one more double crochet into the ring the same way counting first chain three also as a dc we have three double crochets worked then work two chains one and two yarn over work three double crochets into the same ring one two and three 
Then work two chains. Yarn over, work three DCs into the ring. One, two, and three. Now work two chains. One and two. Then yarn over, work three DCs into the ring. The same way. One, two, and three. Now we are going to close this round. So work two chains for this last corner. And now insert the hook in the top third chain of this beginning chain three here. Pull up a loop, work a slip stitch to join this round here. Round one gets completed, we'll go for one more round. See, this is the same pattern we worked in the beginning of this square here. Now work one train and insert the hook into the same DC below, work one single crochet. Then work one single crochet into the next double crochet below. Then work one single crochet atop the next double crochet below. So we have three SCs work. In this corner chain two, work one single crochet, then work one train. Work one more single crochet into the corner chain two like this. We have three DCs ahead. Work one single crochet at top every DC ahead. One, two, and three. Now in this corner chain two in the round below, insert the hook, work one single crochet, then work one chain, then work one more single crochet in the corner chain two. Again, we have three DCs ahead. Work one single crochet at top every DC ahead. One, two, and three in the corner chain two again work one single crochet then work one chain then work one single crochet simple in the next DC is ahead work one single crochet atop each of the three double crochets one two and three now in the corner chain two work one single crochet work one chain and work one single crochet to close this round Beneath the two strands of the first single crochet, insert the hook, pull up a loop, work a slip stitch to join this round here. So this square, small square is ready. Just put a knot and cut that extra thread leaving a little tail and uh, put a knot tightly to secure the thread. At the back side of this motif, just sew in the loose ends wherever. So here I have worked it, work one more such motif. So you have to have two such motifs ready and now let's sew it on this end of the zipper. See where we had already put a zip stopper with the thread in the very beginning. Around it like this put the two pieces together keeping the zip in the center. See we have to cover this. So here I have my thread and needle ready and we're just going to sew the three pieces together. So we'll begin from one end and we are going to sew it the same way we have sewn in our bag. So here I'll first hold the two pieces like this and put the knot. You can also put the knot later and here just you have to work two and four stitches under the, under the top two loops of the single crochets at the periphery of both these motifs, small motifs like this. Just work two and four stitches all the way round. Simple. This is just simple sewing the way we have done till now. And keep the zipper onto the inside. Push it inside if it's showing up. And just keep sewing. And when you reach this other end, I've reached this end, we have to close this end properly. So the three pieces will be sewn including the zipper in the center. So just Sew it the same way. And now here in the corner, I already have a loose end. I just first put a knot here, tie the two threads together to secure the thread well. Put a couple of tight knots here. And then I'll just thread my needle with both the loose ends and I'll secure a little thread into this motif on the inside of it like this. Then cut that extra thread that is there or wherever. See our beautiful 
laptop sleeve or makya sleeve is ready see how beautiful how absolutely neat and tidy uh, this has come up and uh, i loved working it with you see you next time